Hey guys, in this video I want to discuss the power issues of the jumper T light. I put issues in quotes since problems only arise in specific scenarios. I have connected the T light to regulated power supply without limiting the current. I start out at 4.2 volt input voltage and will decrease the voltage to simulate a depleting battery. On the top right you can see an all-in-one flight controller which is bound to the T light in D8 mode. As long as the red light is solid it is bound. When it starts blinking the bind is lost. On the bottom right you can see the receiver tab from Betterflight. Bottom left you can see input voltage. Top left you can see the screen of the T-Light. I am decreasing the input voltage. At first everything is okay, except that, as you can see, the voltage sensing is a little bit off on the T-Light. It also takes a bit of time to adjust to the set voltage, which is totally okay. A real battery would not change voltage so quickly. We now hit 3.5 volts. Everything is still okay. At 3.3V I would expect the low voltage alarm to go off, but since the voltage sensing on my T-Light is a bit off, it is not triggered yet. At 3.2V the alarm is triggered. Other than that, everything is still alright. At 3.1V, strange things start to happen in the receiver tub. The bars are all over the place, although the flight controller is still bound. The situation with the bars being all over the place gets worse and worse. You can also see the stick movements on the screen of the T-Light, so obviously the gimbals are no longer being read correctly. OpenTX has a minimum and maximum display voltage setting. That's why you don't see the voltage readout being updated anymore when dropping below 3.2V. Those limits are used for rendering the battery bars. At around 2.5V the screen stops to work properly, but as you can see the flight controller is still bound. The strange behavior with the input continues until 2.2V when the flight controller finally loses the bind. At around 2V, the T-Light switches off completely. I repeated those measurements with a real battery and got the exact same results. Obviously, I don't want to bore you with an hour long video, that's why I decided to go with the regulated power supply instead. The T-Light is powered by a single 18650 lithium ion battery. Lithium ion batteries can be safely discharged below 3V, but when discharged to 3.3V, over 90% of the capacity has already been used. There is no point to discharge it lower, so the alarm at 3.3V makes sense, at least in theory. From a practical point of view, we have just seen that the voltage sensing seems to be a bit off. My first takeaway from this experiment is, make sure that voltage sensing is properly calibrated. This could also only be a problem on my unit, but you will see it for yourself as soon as you plug in a fully charged 18650 battery. The voltage readout should show 4.2V. If the value is different, as it is in my case with 4.3V, adjust it. Long press the system button. Short press the model button until you are on page 6, hardware. Use the page up button to go to butt calib, battery calibration. Press enter and use the page up down button to bring it as close to 4.2V as possible.
the second takeaway is to adjust the low battery alarm to go off at a higher level, for example 3.4 volt instead of the 3.3 volt which is set from factory. To adjust the low voltage alarm, long press the system button. Short press the model button until you reach page 3, radio setup. Use the page up down button and move to the alarm section. Select battery low and press enter. Now adjust it to your liking. The third takeaway is use high quality cells. You don't want them to suddenly start sagging. When using the internal multi-protocol module the radio draws 180mA. Even a not so great cell should be able to handle that without too much sag. Still, stay away from the cheap low quality cells. The radio itself without the internal RF module being active draws 50mA. Take a look at these two ultrafire cells. One boasts that it has a capacity of 4800 mAh. Very few of the high quality cells reach this capacity, if at all. And this ultrafire cell is super light at just 24 grams. The other one, rated for 3000 mAh, weighs in at a bit over 33 grams. Although weight is obviously not the best indicator, I would stay away from cells that feel too light and promise too much on the label. They are usually really, really bad. Henrik from Lichterin for DK was kind enough to allow me using his battery testing charts so we can have a look at the discharge data for the 3000 mAh rated ultrafire cell. Here you can clearly see that the capacity is not nearly at its rated level, only about 1600 mAh, and that was the best one from his testing batch. The other three only had a capacity of 350 mAh, a measly 10% of what the label promised. Let's compare it to a high quality cell. This one is an LG INR18650 HG2 cell. It is rated at a capacity of 3000 mAh and a continuous discharge rate of maximum 20 amp, so a bit over 6C. More than enough to provide you with the needed 180 mA for a theoretical power on time of 15 hours. You can clearly see the difference in weight, the LG being the heaviest one at 46 grams. Also the specs seem way more realistic. And the charts confirm that. Although we also don't get the fully rated capacity, we are much closer to what was promised with around 2800 mAh. From this chart you can also see that when discharging at a current of 200 mA, the battery can be used for almost 13 hours until discharged to 3.3 V. As mentioned before, the T-Lite draws a bit less than that with the internal multi-protocol being active, but still, close enough. I would encourage you to buy your 18650 cells from a vendor whom you trust that they will sell you a genuine high quality cell. Check out the vape shop in your neighborhood. Vapers use those cells and they need good batteries since they are basically shorting them out. Voltage drop can really become a big issue if you are using an external module like for example the Crossfire Nano. Crossfire tends to have peaks in current draw when there is a big distance between radio and receiver. Peaks in current result in the voltage dropping. This is not a problem as long as the battery is full, even if you use a low quality cell. But the lower the charge, the higher the risk that a peak in current will make the battery drop into a voltage range where the radio starts to either do strange things or shut down completely. Which obviously is not what you want to happen when you are kilometers out. There is a couple of methods to work around this issue. The first one is obvious. Power your external module from external power source, if you want to run it at higher output levels than recommended by Jumper. Not elegant, but safe. The second option is to set the voltage alarm to a higher level, which you can be sure that the battery will not drop too low, even if current peaks. The third solution requires a hardware modification. I am not too sure if anyone is interested in that. If so, let me know and I will make a separate video explaining some options. As a closing statement, I want to summarize that there is no real issue if you are using the radio with a high quality 18650 cell and only use the internal RF multi-protocol module. If using an external module, you should be a bit more careful and probably power the module from an external source if in doubt. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also like and subscribe, it really helps me out.